Hey, welcome back to my studio and Happy New Year. I have noticed, just you know, because I get inspiration from looking around on YouTube and for me that's what started this whole thing, but this year what I decided was I want to kick the year off doing something that's just fun. I've been seeing a lot of these videos on YouTube lately. Um, I've seen Suave Arts has a couple. The one that I first actually watched all the way through though to kind of see what was going on was I think it's Mickey, Mickey, Mickey Arts and Bless Her Heart. Looked like so much fun that I wanted to try this. So what we're doing is, it's a design pour, it's a drop pour, but what it is is the bottom of a two liter bottle of pop, soda, Coke, whatever you want to call it, wherever you're from. And it helps when you pour it over to make really cool designs. But for something this small, which you know I like to pour big, but for this, this is just one of my little uh, test uh, boards and it's press board. So I cut the bottom off of a smaller bottle for this little piece. And then I thought, well, <clears throat> I don't want to le leave that mess to deal with underneath the, dr you know, a dry round piece, which would be easy to deal with. But I thought it might be helpful if I went around and I just took my scissors and just cut, I hope you can see this, some little notches. <laughs> I'll find it. I'll find it. I just put some little notches in it, if you can kind of see them at intervals so that some of it will seep back in and maybe it'll make a design. Who knows? Maybe it won't do anything. <laughs> but that's what we're going to try. Now I mixed my paints extra thin because one of the things I saw a lot in these videos was the, 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 the paint. Once you pour paint out and you start mixing it up in the cup, the air's hitting it. It's already starting to dry. So when you're going to do a pour like this where it's color upon color upon color and you're doing on a board like I am that I didn't prep or prime, which is going to suck a lot of the paint and it's going to help dry it as well, you want to mix your paints a little thinner for that very reason. Now the colors I am, and I'm level, I checked that, but that was a reminder to tell you to make sure you're level, especially on this project. The black and the white are Liquitex uh, Basics. And they, everything today is in pouring medium because I didn't want to deal with the flow trial boogers today. So, plus the, I, there's no silicone or dimethicone in these, so I kind of want a more smooth look, and that's why I chose to go with the pouring medium. So those are our colors today, basically our main black and white. Um, this is a ba uh, basics Liquitex Basics. I want to say it's bright, deep aqua is what that one is, green aqua or something like that. This one is the Folk Art. Color Shift Blue Flash. It's my favorite one out of all of the Color Flash um, paints that are from Folk Art, the new ones that are out. This is the one that's hardest to get for me. Every time I go to the store, it's sold out. Last weekend I went, there was one little tiny bottle, so I bought it. This is another Folk Art. This one is from their Metallics line, and it is Ice Blue. I've done quite a few paintings in the past with the, using this color as an accent because it's just a really neat color to work with. So these are two basically kind of metallic-y, the rest not so much. And we're just going to, you know, like I said, we're just going to be pouring over this one after another and kind of guess at the order we want to do and see how it turns out. I did mix a little side cup here, even slightly thinner than that white, so that I can do a border here to help. It, I'm doing a slick coat is what I'm doing before I pour all this so that there's something for it to move on. So let's get all this out of the way.
All right, we're going to come over here and take a quick little look at this one. Just a fun little practice panel. But it was fun watching that happen. That might be something I'd do on a bigger board. As long as I can figure something else to do with the middle of it. It was fun, though. And there's a few, few cells that showed up. Not because I have any dimethicone or silicone in there, but just because of the different viscosities of the paint. I kind of figured that would happen, especially with the... Which one is that? The metallic ice blue. That's really pretty. And then there was that second little pour I did just to use some leftover paint. And I'm really digging this. Just a little one, but I'm loving it. Yeah, it'll be cool to come back and check these out tomorrow and see how they dried. Till then. And we're back 24 hours later. Well, about that. And yeah, I tilted it. <laughs> as soon as I turned the camera off, I thought, well, it's a wasted pour anyway. So I tilted it and I kind of dig how it turned out. At least it's a base for something, I think. And see that purple up there? purpley blue. That's that folk art color shift blue with the purple in it. So that turned out kind of cool. So yeah, I had fun with that one. And this is kind of another uh, example, another chance for me to show it you an example of the difference on how pouring medium versus Floetrol dry. See, there's more of a gloss to that. That's got pouring medium in it from Liquitex. This one doesn't have a sheen to it. It's kind of chalky almost. There are def There is definition in there. The cool thing about Floetrol though, even though it's got that hold back to it, is once you varnish it or resin it, as what I like to do, it turns out looking like that. So that depth is going to come back up in this pour once I put resin on it. That's going to be fun. Some more stuff I did with the colors that I was using here is I just kind of went nuts and I like to do, you saw me pour that one. Get it where I can see. That one turned out kind of cool. I'm having fun with that one. Yep, I'm digging that one. Plus I always have little wood pieces around that I mess around with and I had some silver that I wasn't sure if it was any good so I had some paint in the bottom of my uh, table and I just poured it in there and threw this on it to see how it would dry and it turned out not too bad so I know that silver is okay. These are some five inch wood pieces that I got for a different project and I was messing with these and just different tools. Just stuff I got at the dollar store doing this with it and just that's when I try out different techniques and tools is on little things with extra paint that I have that drips off so. And, well, I've been getting a lot of requests lately, so I think what we're going to have to take a stab at soon. Got my supplies. Coasters! Now, I kind of like my coaster because, well, it's big. This is a big cup. This is one of the first original blanks that I uh, resined a long time ago. Just a big piece of wood. But I love it for my coffee coaster, and it has been my little... Uh, coffee coaster for about a year now. So I'm looking into some larger sizes like that just to play with. Oh, there's another good uh, example. See the dent indentations and stuff? That's just from, you know, stuff after the fact. I did. I think I dug a hair out of there or something. Once you resin this, all that's going to disappear. And then all you're going to see is just the image. So again, you'd be looking at something like that. So that's it for show and tell this week. Yeah, we got coasters coming soon. Oh yeah, and I have to resin this little lady over here too. We have a lot to do this year. Let's get with it. <laughs>